Well, sponsor, how you doing, man? Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. How, how you doing this evening, Zeb? I'm hanging in there. I'm, I'm just, I love the background there. You know, the dude, he's not in Athens anymore. He's up, <laughs> he's closer to us. Um, hey, how far are you from the, the farm? The, the farm? I'm Boston. only about, I'm only about 25 minutes. Will you live there or will you live near, closer to Ashland? Hey, it better be closer to Ashland than be further away. So I haven't found a place to live right now. I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm uh, freeloading off my parents, which is kind of weird because they're both retired. Well, my dad's retired, newly retired. So I gotta, gotta be living around some 65 year old, uh, parents until I find something. That's not, that's not bad though. No, it's, uh, right. You, you gotta start, right? right two, two, yeah. You gotta two, start two. somewhere. I mean, but boy, you know, your 32 year old son coming back to live with you until you find something interesting to say the least. So second day on the job, right? Today, second day, second official second day. day. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you said Coach Greenley said you're gonna be you're gonna be in for some surprises. What what surprise have you been in for so far? Uh, you know, like we were talking a little bit earlier about just the whole COVID, dealing with that, figuring things out. Um, you know, Coach uh, Hutchins left a couple months ago, really, and and it, they were they really wanted to focus on the hiring process here. They wanted to uh, they wanted to really get a hire they really trusted and believed in, and then. Uh, so they kind of took their time on it. So it's just it's just really playing that catch up right now, getting those guys ready for a season. Um, you know, really talented team, and just so just figuring out uh, who the people to talk to, what routes I have to take to get stuff done. You know, just really learning because it's a yeah, it's the same wrestling team, but different department, different school. Just learning those small things so so you can solve problems faster. Making the jump, going down to D2. You've never uh, coached or wrestled. You're a D1 All-American. You have a D1 coach, assistant coach at Edinburgh under Flynn, and then under Joel at Ohio U for the last five years. What's it going to be like? What do you anticipate as far as uh, moving down to D2 and having a D1 mentality like you have, Colt, being a D1 All-American, wrestling for Coach Ryan at uh, Ohio State? What, what do you anticipate changes wise? Does mentality change? What, what do you do as a head coach? And what's the vision of Ashland wrestling now? Well, I think my experience at Edinburgh really helped me out in uh, definitely an interview process here and understanding uh, what, what we can do here at Ashland uh, because I was at a division two school, just division one wrestling. Uh, so I know a lot of the processes of, of division two, uh, but then, you know, just taking all those experiences, like the coaches you said, I was, I, I was under, I wrestled under Tom Ryan, Lou Roselli, uh, Joe Haskett, Tommy Rollins, Jay Jaggers was there for a year for me. Um, and then I went to uh, Edinburgh and was under Tim Flynn and, uh, and Coach Moore. And then back down to Athens with Coach Greenley. I mean, could you ask for better mentors in, in that and preparing you for a coaching position? I don't, I don't know if you could, you know, at least in this region. So, uh, I, in all honesty, I believe the mentality is the same, you know, time, energy, effort, time, energy, effort. You know, if, if we can do all those things, we'll be super successful here. And, and the kids want to be national champions, all Americans, uh, you know, it's just at a different division. So we'll be doing all the same stuff, just different division. And, and I think the kids will, will embrace that and, and, and we're going to have fun, you know, fun, working hard. The big thing with you guys, that's, that's way different huge difference for you guys the dead period you're not on a dead period you're on a quiet period you guys have a this is like literally one of the only <laughs> times in the history of division two and three wrestling that there's a distinct recruiting advantage for you guys right now whereas you're at OU you're in Athens you guys can't have anybody on campus it's all yeah. zoom meetings you can have yeah. kids on campus now and have them recruit and that's a great school where you are, Colt. I mean, I the education is second to none for Ashton University. What's it like not being on the dead period anymore? Rolling right into it. What's that like it, for it, you? It's fun. You know, thankfully, I have good assistants, uh, you know, Coach Kirst. And then we have a grad assistant, Brett Romanzik, who was a national champion here. Uh, and they're just they're just right on it, you know, constantly on, on calls, getting kids here to visit, getting kids interested. Uh, so that's, that's a huge advantage because down in Athens, yeah, we weren't, we weren't able to have kids down here. And so, you know, that this junior class and even the senior class, just getting kids here and, and saying, Hey, you can come and visit. 
let me go show you around. That's huge. So for us to kind of have that uh, interaction, obviously we're social distancing, wearing masks and doing all the right procedures. Uh, but having them be able to see things physically, be able to see us physically is, is enormous. And uh, it's, it's, it's really actually fun now because before this whole COVID and all these uh, protocols we had to take and that dead period uh, was kind of stressful. But for me here, it's not, it kind of relieves the stress. I'm like, Hey, we're getting, we're getting these, uh, these numbers. We're getting these kids. We're, we're uh, trying to produce the next batch of national champions here. And, and uh, so it's fun, you know, no complaints. I can't complain at all. Talk about, you know, being close to home, right? You got several uh, West Holmes wrestlers on the, on the squad right now, right? How, yeah. Yeah. There's how, a, how's that if you, more comfortable? How, talk about, a little bit about that. Larry. Well, it, my, uh, even my high school coaches, they wrestled, they wrestled here at Ashland university. I, I probably know at least a hundred alumni for that one that wrestled at Ashland. Uh, so having that familiarity with the, with the school and with the program and, and then obviously being familiar with uh, the kids on the team, even when I got here, you know, I know not just the West Holmes kids, but I knew probably close to half of them, you know, half of them are almost are pretty much local kids. So for me, that's, that's personal too, uh, because I take pride in where I come from. I mean, uh, I am, I'm a, I'm proud to be from Ohio, but I'm more proud to be from Holmes County. I mean, Zev can tell you that, uh, you know, <laughs> considering that he, He's actually from Holmes County. He just won't admit it. Zebulon uh, Miller, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it, it's – even if I wouldn't have got this position, I want, I want Ashlyn Wrestling to be great, you know. But for, I was fortunate enough to actually get the head coaching position, and, and that's what I plan on doing. When you come in and you look at the numbers, you look at scholarships, and you got to start dividing money up and what you got to recruit with, uh, you know, they've been on uh, interim head coach for the last, what, four months, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what's that like looking at that and starting to dig into the finances of it and understanding a budget and probably things that you didn't do so much at Edinburgh, way more obviously in Athens with Coach Greenlee. He started to put those travel responsibilities on you as my guess and booking hotels and all that different stuff, right? Yeah. The fun stuff that everybody get in, gets into wrestling coaching for, right? That's right. Administrative work, right? That's right. But now, you know, it's going to change. You're probably not going to wrestle as much, right? Would you agree with that? You're probably going to be wrestling less. Um, no, I'll just be working longer hours. I'm still going to be in the room. You can't keep me out of the room. Uh, I'll just be – I'll have to get – I'll have to manage my time a little better. Uh, and I'll have to start giving those responsibilities a little bit to the assistants, you know, things I can – that they can manage. Uh but uh, I, I think uh, I'm going to be doing all those things. Yeah, seeing that budget, seeing uh, the scholarships, learn how to work those. Like, I, like you said, Joel uh, really trained me to do that down in Athens. He, he really puts responsibilities on, on you and expects you to do them. Uh, so I think those are little things, but it's not going to keep me out of the room. You know, obviously with the fundraising, raising the money, uh, you know, making sure that, Hey, we can continue the success of, uh, success of Ashland wrestling is, is major important, but that's just, that that's part of the job. I've had to put in more time as than I did as an assistant and I'm okay with that. That's what I signed up for, you know, cause if that's, if that's what it takes to be great, that's what I'm going to do. Are you 9.0? Are you guys 9.0 scholarships? <laughs> uh, no, no. So you guys, Finley, I know, is like 1.5 or something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah Division 2 is a little, a little weird, a little wonky, but uh, no, it, I wouldn't say we're fully funded, no. But Okay, I guess the question for me was max scholarships, not so much how many scholarships does Ashland have. The max amount of scholarships is 9.0 in mm -hmm. D2. That's correct, yes? I believe so. Yeah, I think it's a 9.0. And then obviously I remember, D1's I've only been here for a couple, a couple of days. I'm still learning. But, but what I'm saying is 9.9 .9 for D1. I believe it's 9.0 for D2. And that, that's crazy to me because there's some crazy competitive D2 teams. Some of the Notre Dame college teams we've seen on the mat in the last five, six years have been crazy competitive. Obviously, Carney does a great job. You know, it's her job, Carney, man. right? Yeah. Usman, yep. Usman is, is, uh, is Carney. They're, you know, they're super competitive. St. Cloud. I mean, there are just great teams. 
The you guys have a national champ on the staff. You know, Romanzic. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, my follow Carver Rocket, Jake Kramer. He's one of your guys' national champs in the last, I think, three years. And yep. so it, it's crazy good and deep. D2, uh, you know, uh, to quote Willie Saylor, I don't know. I don't know if you always want to go down that road, but he, he made the statement that D2 guys are D2 guys for a reason. Right. And I don't like that. I don't like that. But whatever. Are you always going to agree with what Willie Saylor has to say? But, you know, D2 guys are D2 guys for a reason. It's what he, it's what he always said where it's like, oh, they didn't want to wrestle 12 months out of the year. Whatever it is, that was his kind of take on why D2 guys. You got a lot of D2 guys who would be D1 All-Americans, in my opinion. Yeah, I believe I believe so. It's just a different what they want to do. You know, it's, uh, hey, do I – do I want to sit behind a guy for a year or two? Uh, do I want to get recruited over? Do I want to do certain things? And some people just don't want to go to big schools and they want to compete in wrestling and enjoy it, you know, and, and not have to worry about the stress. It, I mean, division two is competitive. you got a lot of division one wrestlers, like you said, in division two. And, and uh, you're still, like I told you, we're, we're going to be doing all the same things. Uh, is it as, um, is, is it necessary like the, the amount of summer training that they'll be doing? Uh, it's really on them. Uh, so, you know, more like, Hey, in, in division one program, you're, you're coming in. Uh, but uh, no, I, I believe you're not D2 for a reason at all. You know, like I, I got, I believe I, I've watched a, a week of practice here and uh, I was like, dang, there's some D1 wrestlers. There's a lot. I was surprised in all honesty. And I'm not trying to take away from any of these guys, but, I was really thoroughly impressed and I'm like, Hey, these guys could all be in uh, a lot of these guys could be in division one rooms. So no, I, I don't believe, I don't believe what Willie said is true. You're not D2 for a reason. You're D you're D2 for a choice, you know? So when you bring a, uh, you know, you talked about the recruiting and the, the scholarship piece and the competitive landscape. So, so what do you say to that athlete to make it make Ashland their choice? You know, what, what's your, you know, we've talked in the, this show, the marketing aspect, you know, you're two days in, you know, where do you see, you know, what are you going to be marketing, you know, for the university? Well, I think, I think they got to do, and I tell every athlete this, whether I was at the division one level or I'm here, you know, you got to make a, a checklist of what you want in a school, what you want to see in a program, what you want to see in a team. Uh, and you got to kind of decide on that, you know, do I, do I want to go division one? Well, if you do, then, obviously division two is not for you. Uh, but Hey, do I want to be a four year starter? Well, yeah, if that, that's important to you. Then your chances of being a four year starter at, at, a, at a division two are probably a little better than division one. You know, do I want to be a national champ? You know, what kind of, do I want to, do I want to be an athlete over a student? <laughs> and I hate saying that. Uh, but you know, a lot of these schools, I think you you see that at a, at a at a Division One level. Hey, being an athlete's sometimes more important than being a student, you know, and uh, making that that distinction. And and so you just got to make that checklist. Hey, do I want to be at a small school or do I want to be at a big school? You know, do I do I want to have a a more uh, more rural, uh, more slower pace type university or do I want to be in a big city? So there's a lot of choices when when we're talking about talking to a kid about what he wants, but when it comes down to it, I want a kid to go where he wants to go. You know, I don't want to not convince it, convince a kid to come here when, you know, you're, you're, he doesn't want to come here. So he has to feel comfortable. He has to feel at home. He has to feel like he's going to trust me and the guys on the team. And, and uh, that's what it comes down to. Colt, the, the big thing with me is, well, first off, I got to correct myself. It was Luke. Kramer, who was yeah, Luke, Champion. Luke, yeah, yeah. Jake was uh, unsay All American at Tiffin, you know, another D two program in Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, here's my thing: you guys can load up, you can win a national title, you can get the job done there. There is no question. Whereas you're down in Athens, Athens Bobcats, they sneak in and get a trophy. It's just like winning a national title, <laughs> but you're probably never you're never gonna beat so many of those guys, right? You can yeah. win the national title there. There's no doubt about it. Like, this isn't crazy talk. Zub got dropped on his head tonight at wrestling youth practice with his kids. You guys can win. Yeah, you've got the the. You, you can do it. What's the plan? Like, how, how do you like set that 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 in motion? You know. 
Well, the beautiful thing about Ashland is is they're, they're, you, they they pride themselves on being successful. You know, as far as if you look at a lot of their athletic programs, their basketball teams, their track teams, football teams, those those teams are constantly winning uh, winning titles. You know, women's basketball here is phenomenal. You know, and it's and it's just full full of local area girls. And then you look at the wrestling team over the years and just look at the success they've been having. They're right on that edge for the last, I would say, 20 years, you know, under, under uh, Co-Watch and Durnland and then Hutchins here. They've been constantly been right on that edge. And it's just a matter of just taking them over that edge. And I think that's, that's what the, the administration sees here. That's what the wrestlers see. They all see like, hey, we're right there. We just got to have a little bit of push. We got to do something a little bit different. And uh, before you know it, hey, you know, we're there. And I got, I personally, Coach Hutchins uh, before me, he built a team that is filled with studs. Like I got six, seven, eight guys here that can all compete and all can be all Americans. And it's, and I saw that in my first couple of days here and it was exciting for me. I got, I got like little giddy feet, you know, and it's just a matter of just tweaking some things, keep getting them to kind of buy in what I want them to do and, and how I want them to compete, you know, and, and uh, obviously, mixing in with what they do and hey we go out there and march and throw just go win a title that's the plan you guys were talking earlier Zeb yeah what was the story you're about to tell before you recorded about one of your favorite state finals oh you and Josh Roller right you and Josh, yeah, Roller, Josh. 50 was it 52 yeah that was my junior year 152 okay so just to build it They've got this guy. He's the guy. He won like he won something like Beast of the East or something. He won something huge like that, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he was a little banged up during the year, uh, but he was ranked coming in the year. I think Josh was ranked like second or third in the country at one point. Yeah, and he was like the guy. And and I remember the hype for this final. It would be like uh, I want to say Jeff Nup versus Avery Zirkel. Oh wow! It was hype like. Oh, oh, you you like you like me you like me pulling out the history, huh? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like these finals where you're just like everybody, it's there's so much build up to it, right? So much build up, so much build up, so much build up, right? Like just incredible. Uh, I think it was uh, Carr and Dom Demas, maybe. I think that was another one, right? Like a it, ma- it may have been. I think that's a little bit. That's that's obviously way after my time. Well, I no, was, but I'm saying like a uh-huh. final of these calibers that I'm saying like your final was of the caliber of those finals. Like, like oh, I think another one was like uh, St. John, St. John and Roger Chandler. I think that that was one St. John and Roger Chandler was a state final, dude. Um, that's crazy, right? Like you look at some of these state finals and it is like uh, Marinelli and Eric Burnett. That, that's a crazy state final, right? Like we're talking about both guys being D one all Americans and, Maybe Nup and Zirkle didn't get there, but like they were, they were that pedigree, right? Like it was a crazy, you know, like you, you anticipate this, your final met that it was a de- an all decade final. There's no question. Um, you're chasing him around the mat, dude. You're all over his legs. He's funking you. He's doing all this crazy stuff. When did you know you had him? Well, actually I, I, I had to think back on that match, but I actually got taken down with, uh, 30 like 35 30 i don't remember but i got taken down in a in a in um he hooked a he hooked in and got a uh merkel on me and got scored a takedown there and i i escaped and actually came in with a high crotch a real long high crotch he's sprawling sprawling and i just i did a whole my meathead is meatheadness just pulled him in and finished the takedown on him with like 20 seconds left to win and i wrote him out and that's that's yeah, just backing away. I mean, again, you know, just doing what I do best is just going after somebody, and it, it's not always pretty. You know, you've seen a lot of my matches. They're not, they're not. There's nothing uh, fluid and and uh, great about my wrestling back then. I just went, you know, attempts, and they weren't great attempts. But eventually, you got if you take fifty shots, you're gonna get one or two of them, right? Yeah, didn't he take an injury timeout too? Yeah, yeah. I mean. It, it's just the, yeah, that's, that's high school, Zeb. I, I can't think back that far. <laughs> so, okay. So the, okay. I okay. Don't, I don't even remember my college matches. Just... Okay. So let's talk quarterfinals your senior year then. I remember you win in the quarterfinals your senior year. 
was it in where was it your senior year? Omaha or something? Where? No, nah, it? it was Philly. It was Philly. Philly. And I'm chasing <laughs> you around the arena. I'm looking for you, and I ran the whole three quarters of the arena because that you can't always <laughs> go through. And I'm looking yeah. for you, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm pumped, I'm celebrating, and I was like, dude, you're finally an All American. You're like, yeah, but I'm gonna win in the semifinals. <laughs> And you had Burroughs. You had yeah. Burroughs in the semifinals. And I was like, yeah, good. I'm glad you're confident. Yeah. I was like, wow. You're, you, you know, but like, that's a that's a great mentality to have. You thought you could knock him off. I, you have to think that, though. Well, I mean, you got to have confidence in your ability. Even, even if uh, you may be a, that guy may be on a roll, you got to believe in yourself. I mean, the, the, the funny thing about that whole match with the Burroughs match is, I, I think about that, and obviously he's one of the best of all time. But sometimes I you you were so confident that you got you got yourself way too amped up, and you go out there and make mistakes, you know. And that's I mean, looking back, obviously you're always gonna look back and say what if, what if. But yeah, dude, he he, <laughs> he double legged me off my feet a couple times in that during that match. <laughs> I, but I I was just so excited. You won. Who'd you beat in the quarters? Uh. Asper, yeah, Asper. I, I was think it his Asper? Name was, yeah. Yeah, the Maryland dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, but it was. Um, I think that was a close one. I don't think he blew his doors off. No, I didn't blow his doors off. He kept it close. I don't remember the match though. In all honesty, I just remember I was somewhat excited to finally get it done. You know, after after being there a couple of years and being, being in a position where I was at the end of the year and just not being able to get it done. It felt good to finally, you know, actually listen to my coaches a little bit and, and prepare the right way and, and, uh, and actually have my feet under me when I was at the national tournament. So, but, you know, speaking on that, right now you're coaching those kids at that age, right? Looking back, you know, going through those years at Ohio state, is there anything that you took away you know, from the coaches there that you're, you know, you're now going to be teaching, you know, and coaching those kids at that same age, at that same kind of, you know, mental state, you know, anything you take away from those years there that you kind of are going to try to instill there at Ashland? So I, I'll give you an example of today. I had a kid that's, uh, you know, obviously they're going home for Thanksgiving break and he's, he's getting some training in and, and all this and doing all these workouts and tell me about them. And, and I'm like, Hey, you're on break. I'm glad you're getting your workouts in, but you need to relax. You need to go fishing. You know, a kid lives down in Florida, you know, go enjoy the weather down there a little bit. Yeah. Get your training in, but stop being so tense. Stop, stop thinking wrestling all, all, all day, every day and, and go, go smell the flowers, you know, and that's really what I would tell somebody because then that can help you open your mind a little bit when you're actually in the room or in the weight room or on the track run and, and you can learn more, you know, cause I think a lot of athletes, especially when they have this eye on their prizes, they're, they're so tunnel visioned. Like, and I, I'll just use me, myself as an example, as an athlete, I was so tunnel visioned on being an all American, being a national champ that I forgot to soak up what Jay Jaggers did or what soak up what Lou, a little technique of what Joe Heskett or Lou Rizzelli or Tom Ryan or, or all these great guys I had in front of me, you know, Mike Pasella, Reese Humphrey, uh, Lance Palmer, you know, and I didn't learn how to wrestle until after I got out of college. <laughs> and I, and I hate saying that. I mean, I learned some things, but I didn't learn as much as I could, you know, you see all these great wrestlers now and they're just so technical and, and slick. And, and I think that's what they're doing a little bit is it's not complete tunnel vision eye on the prize. You know, they're still, they're still focused on it, but they know how to shut it off certain times of the day to really, really relax and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell that. So I was, I just made me chuckle because this kid wants to be good that I have. He's so good and he is good. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, relax, smell the flowers. Yeah, didn't you You'll be a better wrestler kind of, for it. You kind of got tunnel vision there and, you know, cutting down the weight, you know, running a marathon. Pre I vaguely remember it. You know, training was pretty, <laughs> pretty strict, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, back then, uh, it was, uh, it was, like I said, like that, you know, and I was, I thought I was doing everything for the, the right reason. And sometimes it's just like, Hey, you know, maybe you need to do it a little different. And, mm -hmm. and, and there's all these people telling me how to do it. And, 
And obviously, if you could go back in time, you would change it. But it's also a life learning lesson. I'm a better, better coach for it now that I went through some of the things I shouldn't have done, you know, and, I, and a lot of the things that I thought they were right. And, and, uh, you know, it's cause I was always in a mentality. You got to train harder. You got to train harder. You got to train harder. And I never didn't learn until after like, Hey, yeah, you do need to train harder at certain times. Mm-hmm. You know, the, my biggest thing I take from everything is I just want to have good effort out of all my kids when they're in the wrestling room, whether it's an hour or 30 minutes, just effort, you know, but you don't need to grind yourself down into a pulp uh, two days before a match or a day before a match, you know? I never understood the whole, the 157 marathon thing. Like I remember seeing you that year and I'm like, this guy is, he is, I, could we just run a power plan off of him? Like dude, the amount of energy you would expend in a match and, and just like seeing the, being at the NCAA tournaments where you fell short. And I'm like, he's so good. But like you're saying, you were just so high output. Do you think you didn't have legs going into March in some of those scenarios? Uh, again, we're, we're going back on, on something that, you know, happened and, and should have, could have, would have, you know, I don't like to be like, what would have happened? I mean, that's just no way to think about it, but I mean, if obviously I would have changed some things and, and I would have listened to coaches, you know, they're saying, Hey, slow down, do less. Don't, why are you, why are you doing that before practice? Why are you doing it after? Again, it goes back to that mentality of, Hey, it's getting down, down towards the end of the line. I got to do more. Well, no, that's actually less is more. And I never really understood that. And uh, when I finally did, it was after I was, yeah, that senior year, I went back up. I didn't, I didn't barely do anything going into the national tournament because I didn't have to. Number one, my, I had thinned my body down so much. I changed my body composition so much during that whole summer, getting down and running, you know, 60, 70 miles a week when I was training (laughs) that, uh, that I didn't, I didn't have to, cause I, I was trying to build my body back up to 65. Mm-hmm. You know, it was funny. Cause I actually lost when I was training for that marathon in like October, I don't know when I ran in October, uh, my mild times when we would do our mild times and practices actually went down than what they were when I was weighing like 185, 190 pounds. So I was running, I was running faster mild times at 190 than I was when I was weighing like, Oh, wow. 72 you know, in my senior a, year a mile record holder here back in, in uh, northern ohio come on man what, what'd you run your mile and i gotta know come on man i can find it what was it that you know i, I which, remember you telling okay. me about this which which my like high school this or, is, or, high, this is or like seventh high. grade zeb the gazelle miller do you know zeb or do i gotta look it up Four forty something in eighth no. grade and then eighth i grade. qualified he lapped me. I, I qualified a couple of times in D2 in Ohio in the four by eight. We were seventh in the four by eight. I broke two minutes in the 800. And then um, uh, like 428 was my fastest 1600 in, in high school. What happened to you, Zeb? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, it's, hey, I ran a two, I was a 235 pounds, ran a half marathon, and I, I ran sub. Uh, sub nines and all my That's awesome I, and um and then i ran a marathon that was raw sub eights you know what i mean so i mean i was 200 and probably 230 then 235 when i ran the, but the thing with the half marathon is i was with bader in london for the london olympics yeah and then i went to i went to dublin ireland for six days afterwards <laughs> and stayed across from the guinness brewery so you yeah. know what happened every night then we dude the it was like drinking chocolate milk like 10 of them every night yeah and then i was like ah, i'll just go home and jo- my buddy joe charlton who joe worked with clint at home city ice up in okay. Bedford. joe's a good dude and joe's like hey you want to run a half marathon and i went out the thursday it was a sunday half marathon but i was running when we were in london like two three days a week you're carb loading right I was carb loading. There you go. Yeah. Still, still carb loading, I guess. But anyhow, <laughs> um, yeah, and I went and did it. I went and ran like nine miles the Thursday before it. And I was still running three, four miles a day. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. And I went and did it. And I didn't walk and broke uh, nine minutes and all the miles. Jared King, 
Dr. King. He was, uh, he cheered me on and high fived me. Yeah. And then, uh, Ashland All American Chris Shears gave me water at one of the water breaks. No way. Yeah, it was it was Press Guile. I did the Press Guile one. Jared's a good yeah. dude, man. Yes. I mean, we, you know, we, we competed, you know, we competed against each other. And and then obviously when I was up at Edinburgh, you know, he came up all the time and uh just a great guy, you know. And great and the brothers I, a great guy too. They're oh. they're just awesome people. They fund a scholarship at Edinburgh. I know, and and I and they, they, I'm telling you, that's just how Edinburgh people are, man. They're all I in. Love it. They're all love in it. on that program, and and yep. you don't have fans like Edinburgh fans, right? You know, and, and it's beautiful. You may tell you a uh, marathon story, my marathon story. Yeah, I want to hear it. And it's like, okay, so I was going to ask, you what was your time? And you go ahead. I want to hear uh, your so, marathon. So I, like I said, I was running a ton, getting everything down. And then, uh, you know, Coach Ryan ran it with me. Right. Did you know that? I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Who was a third. Wasn't there a third? No, there wasn't a third. But okay. so I he had ran a half marathon a couple months before, and he qualified a pretty good time. So he was in like the fourth or fifth uh, gate, you know, or whatever they the corral wave wave. Yeah, sure. And uh, I hadn't, so I was supposed to be in like the twenty fourth, you know, because there's like fifty thousand people that run that Columbus Marathon, right? Mm -hmm. There's a ton. And so I wasn't in a, a, his corral. So he's like, ah, whatever, we're getting up to the front. So we go up to the first corral and, you know, the professional runners are, are right in front of us, like the Kenyans and all that. And he's, he's getting all amped up and, and everything all excited. And, and coach Ryan just bust out of the gate, like running, we were running like 620, 630 miles for like the first eight miles. Oh my God. Yeah, and I'm like, Tom, <laughs> Tom, you got to slow down. He's like, no, no, you know, you know how high energy Tom is and how, <laughs> how intense he gets and how excited he gets. And, and uh, you know, it's very infectious. I mean, obviously, that's part of the reason why they're so good down there. You know, he's just he's just all in. And uh, I'm like, you got to slow down, Tom. We, we didn't train for this because we trained for like a 315 pace, you know, all the way. Which is awesome. Which is awesome. Yeah. Well, our goal, both of our goals were to qualify for the, the, the Boston, you know, and, uh, and I'm like, dude, you're going to shut down. You're going to shut down. And, and he's like, no. So I just let him go. I slowed down, kind of always stayed in, in front and behind him a little bit, but I just let him do his own thing. And, and people, there's athletes and, and fans and they knew cause we were wearing a Ohio state wrestling shirts and, and, and they're all like, oh, your coach is in front of you. I'm like, eh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But then it come around mile 16, 17, I'm just slowly gaining on him. And, uh, and I slapped him on the butt and I said, I'll see you later at like 18, 19. He actually ended up cramping up at like mile 21 and a half and like full body cramp. Like mm -hmm. that's how, that's how all in he was, you know, and he just went and he, it took him it took him a little bit longer to finish than I did, you know, once he got up, but God rest his soul. He, that man has, <laughs> has more, more energy, more gets so excited for things like that. But yeah, I finished in like three, three hours and nine minutes on my first one. That is super impressive, yeah, man. So. Have you, have you done it since? <laughs> no, <laughs> cause I wasn't right for, I wasn't right for like three months after that. Yeah. You know, because I had to wrestle like I wrestled two days later I ran a marathon. Jeez. It was at the blue and, or the scarlet and gray, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I remember. I was like, this guy is amped and out of his mind. Yeah, and I I looked at that next. I looked at on that that uh, scarlet and gray match, if I remember right. Wasn't yeah, but right you, you've learned so much, man. Like, uh, I, I learned from my mistakes. That you do definitely. I mean, you're throwing them out there. Hey, what the heck? I Might mean, as well learn yeah uh colt you know you coach some really tough guys um i think walters for me like watching walters at the 2016 ncas in new york city he tore his acl first match mm -hmm. right came comes back and he takes seventh place is that the toughest guy you've ever coached been a teammate with like who are some guys that you've either coached been teammates with like who are some really tough nuts like like a, like a Cody Walters? He's a junkyard dog. 
Well, his he don't name look is, like much, but he's a winner, right? That, like, that name, we'll, we'll go backstory on him because I don't know if he'll tell you a whole lot on that. But, yeah, he tore his ACL. He battled back. If you remember, um, in the quarterfinals, he was wrestling. Was it uh, uh, Indiana or Iowa State kid? Well, was it? Ah, I forget who it was. But he, he had major decision that kid at the Midland Finals. Just beat the tar out of more. Not the finals, food. but. Was yeah, Witherspoon. Yeah, he gets hit in this. Uh, we call it the straight jacket. You know, just double arm, double tilt. Guy had both of his wrists, and that that moment sucked for me because if you look at the matchup between, I think he would have had, uh, he would have had Martin right in the semis. Yes. Uh, yes. That matchup would have been interesting for me to watch. Just the athleticism versus the guy that doesn't just has no style. And as a hammer on top. So I was, I was really like, I thought he was primed to have a great year that year, but for him to battle back the way he did, you know, is unbelievable with a torn ACL, especially a guy that's so unorthodox as he was, you know, but that's just one tough guy. I mean, you're looking at guys like, you know, Lance Palmer was a hammer. We all know that, you know, that guy was tougher than nails, you know, he's still tough. He's still still pretty tough. (laughs) that guy used to rip my shoulder off and not care. You know, he, that's one beautiful thing about Lance is he, he definitely made me tougher, you know, every day in the room, just by trying to break my shoulder in half and put the boots in and yeah, suck the life. But you can look at guys like Mitchell port, you know, AJ shop, you know, Mitchell port blew out his kneecap in uh, in the NCAA finals against Logan Stieber's senior year. You don't really hear nothing about that. He still, and he, and, you know, that guy, that guy is tougher than nails. And then like AJ shop, same thing, busted up his knee, thumbs, everything. And that guy is grittier than grittier, you know? So there, I've, I've been around all these tough dudes, you know, Jay Jaggers scrapping as long as he did, you know, sucking the weight he did to, and then goes and wins national titles, you know, to overcome that, that the, what he did through having, not having good years, you know, we all saw it. He was taking losses during the year, but he found a way to get it done at a the NCAA, the NCAA net championships. That's toughness. That's finding a Jagger's way to blood. It's, it's actually yeah. Jagger's yeah. blood. If you didn't know yeah. that's science, but it's you Jagger's know, seeing, blood. seeing all that, there's different types of toughness and, and those guys showed it at the right times. And, and boy, I, I wish I could have had a little bit of it. You know, I, I think I'm a little tough, but you know, having some of their toughness would have been pretty nice. You, you two talk- Chanel Firebirds. How about that? Yeah, two yeah, Chanel point. Firebirds. You're, you're, point, you're, right. You just mentioned. Yeah. I know, right? No longer a, a uh, organization. Not a place yeah. anymore. Yeah. And Anthony Ralph, the master recruiter, a Chanel Firebird. If you didn't know. Yeah. Well, you could also say uh, Moore was also a. Chanel Col- yeah, Collins' yeah. dad was a two-time two-time state champ for for the Firebirds. Yeah. Dude, that that is. Listen, we could do a whole thing on on um, Chanel. What a Program. You should you should actually bring all the Chanel grads on that uh that were successful at every level high, college high school. Yeah, that's a long list, that's for certain. I think you gotta like fist fight some of those guys too because they're a little gritty. Yeah, they're they're, they're a little gritty. gritty. They're, they got some grit. The Chanel Firebirds got some grit to them. Yeah, just don't no bring Mister Walters in on the program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, I think he's the head coach at Nordonia now. He is. He is. He's doing a good job. Yeah, he is, dude. Doing a bad I'll tell you what, he might have a state champ this year if they have wrestling. Sal yeah. Perrine is good. I know you probably can't mention college recruits. Perrine is pretty good. I like him. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're obviously doing it. You're like, you're right. They're doing a really good job. But the Chanel Firebirds, man, just a gritty, gritty, tough program. And, you know, like you've, you've been, you've coached them, you've wrestled with them, you've been coached by them. They it's like that doing. old West, West NY programs back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those, those teams were so tough. You know, growing up as even in their high school and all that, you don't, you don't, I guess, what is that the factory now? What would you call, what's the West End? Why now? Uh, it's, well, it's, it's West Shore. West Shore. Yeah. 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 yeah so they still Shore. got that. They're still cranking out studs. That's Seiko. That's Guy. Yeah, yeah. Guy Seiko runs West Shore. And then Charlie, Charlie Agazino, Gus Seiko, that they, they, they all, all run defend that. soap. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, all right. hey, wait, <laughs> what? I can't hear you. <laughs> what? Defense wait, soap. wait, hey, hey, you know, Colt, I got a real quick question. You know, we're going to piggyback off of that. Colt, are you, I know you're Holmes County, so I can, I'm just going to, I'm going to be stereotypical and I already know what you are, but 
Are you a bar man or are you a body wash man? You obviously know I'm a bar man. Uh, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. <laughs> ah, yes. So no, you what's talk, up, body wash? <laughs> so you talked, uh, you know, unheard story, you know, with Mitchell Port and, you know, talking Holmes County, growing up back in Holmes County, you know, with your brother, any other routes, or do you have any other unheard of stories that, that you want to share? Ah. Uh, no, not really. I mean, I don't want to embarrass Nothing myself. I don't want to embarrass Zeb. I mean, Zeb, weren't you one of my Fargo coaches one year? Yeah. yeah. Why am I embarrassed? I don't know. It's probably because <laughs> Say it I on air. Go. You already Fargo. said I was Amish. <laughs> What'd you uh, take at Fargo, Colt? I only placed one time. What'd you take, third? No, like seventh? You got seventh. I think that was the year I lost a... Uh, reader and morning star oh what a, yeah. those are horrible losses you know what? uh those are the two guys you lost to yeah oh my uh, god you know and then oh. but no who you else know, was at the weight who else was at the freaking weight i don't remember reader had to won did reader yeah win? Re john john won that one you know you know ryan's really good at keeping scores tight but john was a john uh really knew how to be a hammer <laughs> obviously but uh no i'm trying to think of any other times but if fargo's fargo i mean personally the kids have fargo's such a hammer of a tournament i mean that's not a fun tournament you know and not not many good experiences there you learn you get humbled there no, you, no don't question. Right, you don't come ready to wrestle or you don't cut weight right or you don't do something right so I mean, that's why you see a lot of the teams like the Illinois team always comes there ready to wrestle and they, they do very well there. Yeah. They're, you, yeah. Team Illinois, how they, how that training cycle has gone for them. And, and I remember when overtime was there and they had overtime and Izzy and they were almost like competition in the Chicago land area. And you had guys on your team at uh, Ohio U. you had a couple of those guys from the Chicago land area and you can oh. see, yeah, I mean, they're, and they're talented guys, really mm -hmm. talented guys. It's a massive, uh, you know, metropolitan area. And, and you, you look at the, the, the guys we're coaching. Like, yeah, Illinois is a great state. And Joel does a really good job of recruiting Illinois. Yeah, he Ohio. loves Illinois. And, and all those kids go back to Illinois, too. They all go back to the Chicago area after they graduate because there's, there's obviously they can get jobs there. And they all get back into their programs or at least another program. And so – that pipeline he has through Illinois is, is fantastic for him. And he's, he's really uh, fed off of it. And I hope he keeps on feeding off of it, you know, obviously, cause I want, I want OU to be good. I coached there. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt, man. I mean, uh, what's your fondest memory of, of Joel Greenlee? And, you know, everybody loves Joel Greenlee except for Jim Andersey. Um, <laughs> everybody else loves Joel Greenlee, dude, loves him. You know what I mean? Like Joel, Joel doesn't have an enemy besides Jim Anderson. You know, like, like, like everybody else loves Joel. I think all the Matt Colt, coaches love you, Joel. Colt, what I tell you before we went, before Zeb jumped on? Oh uh, yeah. You just pretty much said that. Oh. I mean, I mean if, I, if I remember right, I mean, you obviously, you had a couple other things to say, but okay. other than that, you're like, Hey, everybody, Joel Greenlee's the man. Right. Joel, Cause Joel Greenlee is the man. Right. Yeah. It's just the way he he comes off, you know. He, he is a big, he's a big bully, but he is the nicest bully. You know what I mean? Like he gives Zeb Zeb Miller a hard time, but he does it in a way where you just can't be mad at him. I love or that you, guy. And you and you can't get mad at him because if you do, he's he's just gonna grab you by his big bear claw and crush you. He's a big human. Yeah. Oh, he's but a big he, human. Joel Joel is Joel is. I was telling, uh, I was saying that, you know, he's, he's old school, but he's new school. Yeah. He man. has a good mixture of finding how to still be old school, how to be a no nonsense kind of guy, but he understands the student athlete. Mm. So he can mix that well and he can relate to those kids so well, you know, and, and he does such a wonderful job at that, you know, but my fondest memories are just being at tournaments and him sitting in the, sitting in, in the chair next to the table and just, hounding referees he's so good at just hounding referees and and of course they don't can't get mad at him how are they going to get mad at him are they going to say something nasty to him <laughs> you can't poke the bear or he's just going to poke back you know 
I my, my thing is Andrusy doesn't like him because he steals so many Northeast Ohio guys. Yeah. And, and you know what I mean? Like Andrusy doesn't like him because he stole Cody Walters. Yeah. yeah you know? that's, and, that's always a running thing. Yeah. You know that, right? Like that. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Jimmy and, and Cody's dad went to high school together. I want to say graduated from Nordonia together. Yep. How wild is that, right? Like, if you look at it like that, I mean, that's crazy. And Joel, Joel went and took him. And we obviously know, you know Cody's a two-time All-American, one of the toughest guys that has ever put on a Bobcat singlet. And it's like, I love that history. Dude, I love it. You got to know I love it. Like, you know, he Jedi mind tricked me into creating the uh, the uh, the the grudge match trophy. Yep. He called, hey, hey, hey. and then Scott Blank. He's the head coach at Ashtabula St. John. He made it actually in our shop class at Riverside where I teach. <laughs> and school got canceled the day that I was supposed to, because the, the, Kent does a down and back. They come yeah. down in the morning, do the, the dual at OU, and then they drive back. I don't know if OU does the same thing. OU kind of does a road trip and catches Kent on the way through maybe. But whatever. Um, school got canceled that day, and I had to drive up to Riverside and get it come back and catch the bus because I rode down with Kent and Andy Racy was just like, you made a rivalry trophy in a year. You let him convince you to make a rivalry <laughs> trophy in a year. One of the only years they're going to beat us. Jim does have a really good record against Joel. Yep. You know, he might be like 10 and four or something. He's got a really good record. We've been him. catching up since I've been there. No question. No, no question. You're right. <laughs> You're right, but he's like probably 10 and four, 10 and five against Joel, which is really good. Yeah, I but, have no idea. But, but I'm sure Joel will be all over me. Oh, hey, what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in there wrong? Let, me, let me record this right now so I can yeah. have <laughs> So, so he was so mad. And Reese is like, You made a rivalry trophy <laughs> in the year we weren't gonna win it. I'm like, You're missing the point. Um, I think there's more rivalry trophies to come. But he, he, yeah, oh, you won that first year. And it was kind of awesome. Um, but the trophy, like, was it, did they put it in their locker room? Yeah. So it's down in their locker room right now. They hang it up there. And so, I mean, you got a piece of history in there, Zeb. I love Every it. Year. I love it. I mean, I it, like it more when it's in Kent because yeah. it usually sits on the mantle at one of my rental properties. Oh, he lets the athletes have it. I think they just take it. Oh, for one, for whenever <laughs> I, I, I think it's been around. I'm sure it's probably made some pictures on some uh, social media at parties would That's be a, my guess. I think uh, you having those rental properties and wrestlers use them maybe an NCAA violations that you may need to look into that. Well, I just sold it. So, uh, so you're clear. You're clear. <laughs> clear. I'm all free and clear, buddy. I'm all free and clear. Hey, Jared, are we going to kick over to and watch a couple matches with yeah. Colt? Yeah, we Colt, do you have time that. or not? I got time. 